So I wouldn't exactly call this a basket case, but this is actually how this mower came to me with the air filter like that. Amazing. I don't know what this pull cord was that he was using. It's empty, it's dry, but ooh, if this had smell-o-vision, mm. The dead man switch does nothing. Before I can even check and see if this thing will pop off, we're gonna have to fix the recoil and replace that cable. Nope, my name's not Bernie. I'm the lawnmower lady, and I like fixing small engines. Today's woeful tale of epic neglect swirls all around this Honda lawnmower. It's a Honda Harmony 2 model number HRS216. It has the Honda GCV160 engine on it. This thing is, well, it's just a mess. Let's just dive right into the deep end. This guy bought me three equally abused pieces of equipment, and he says he was running them last year. Oof. I kind of doubt that. Seems like he picked three things up off the side of the road and says, can you fix them? So here we go. First thing, I'm going to have to sacrifice these uh, wire ties to take off this cable. And this is a 10 millimeter socket. Oops, I'm going to have to hold the other end. That gives us the clearance to take this off of there. On the other end, just squeeze these two tabs together and hopefully I can get this out of here because I'm afraid the cable is sort of just rusted right in there. I might have to go to more drastic measures. Nope, it's not moving. Time for the heavy guns. These are wire rope cutters. There we go. That was pretty easy. Then we can squeeze these little wings together. Well, that's another way. A friend at BS Small Engines, his name is Brandon. He actually makes a nice little cable tool for this. Come on. There we go. Yeah, these actually just thread on, so I might be able to get some use out of this in the future. All right, the new cable for this is Honda part number 54530VG3. D01. And if you look this up online, it's kind of confusing part number. It looks like it's like 30 bucks for this part, but it's actually, you get the wrong part number, it's the entire assembly. Both cables, the handle, all that mess, so you don't need that. Thread this guy right in there and pull it out the other end. Slide that in, and these little wing sections just secure that end in there. So uh, different online websites show um, differing part numbers for this guy. And uh, unfortunately, this I guess is a replacement number. The other one, the cable came out of this side, and this has some grooves in there. I guess if you had a separate drive cable that went on here but this part will fit and there's not that much strain on that so i'm sure this will work just fine all right not too tight and replace the two cable ties keep it from getting caught up in trees or bushes or whatever and cable works just fine And the next thing, before we can even get this guy to pop off, we're going to have to remove, we're going to have to fix the recoil. With some real starter rope. Oops, this whole stud's coming out. That sometimes happens, and hopefully it's not going to be on the one that holds the coil on. So let's... Take this fuel cap off of here. We're going to have to replace that stud. This sometimes happens. 
little bit of penetrating fluid. This is a uh, half ATF and half acetone. Pretty volatile little mix there. And see if that'll let that sit for a minute or two. It's been sitting for about 30 minutes. And see if we can't get this off. I'm going to use the manual method rather than that power tool. Mm. Not really wanting to move yet. Mm, I think all it's doing is rounding off that nut. Or get this on the bench where I can work it a little better. Usually these have a filter inside of there, but I don't see that right now. He also said it was leaking. I don't see any cracks in that, but we'll see what happens. Ugh. So after nearly two hours of trying to get this off here, I just had to cut the nut off. It was kind of bad. Uh, I have replaced the uh, recoil rope. And if you want to see a video of that, I'll put a link right there uh, for how to do it on a Honda. Uh, the one thing that's not in that video, however, if you are needing to replace the recoil spring inside of there, I just put some drops of a uh, light oil in there. But a lot of people don't realize this. This screw in the middle is a left-hand thread, which means you have to tighten it to loosen it. If you're typically follow what I'm saying, um, clockwise is going to loosen it. Anti-clockwise is going to tighten it down. So a lot of people mess that up, and it just goes into a piece of plastic, so it's really easy to mess up. So there we go. I'm gonna put this on and. See if I can get this baby to fire off. The fun never ends. I'm just trying to get this thing to pass some gas. I thought I'd check the spark first. My friend Tom in Australia turned me on to the spark checker. And of course it was flashing red, which says, oops, that's in Spanish. Turn that around. Change the spark plug or wait for the flooded engine. No gas in it anyway. Of course, now I gotta change the spark plug. I just want this thing to pop off once, that's all. Put a new plug in here. This is a 21 millimeter magnetic socket. Let's get this old one out of here. This is, I don't know, the plug looks horrible, obviously, for all the other bad condition that it's in. These machines come with a, a BPR5ES NGK, is what's supposed to come in them. Get that all seated on the head. And then about another quarter of a turn. That's all we need. Pop that guy back on there. Let's see if it'll, see if I get some good spark now. The great thing about this little spark tester is that you can sort of do it one-handed. You don't have to see it. All the other testers, you gotta look at it and see it. So what did that say? Green light, good ignition. It's going to squirt a little bit of go juice directly into the throat of the carb. This is just a two-stroke mix. And the, uh, the choke butterfly is kind of sticking, so we're going to see uh, more problems to fix. Let's, let's see if she fires up. Say that's a success. Let me get the oil draining out of here. Get that all the way over. Let that oil keep on draining out. So I did remove the spark plug again and the brake is engaged. And yeah, this blade's in pretty bad shape. The underside is pretty dinged up. So I'll be taking that off to uh, sharpen that up. This is a 50-50 mix of uh, acetone and automatic transmission fluid, which makes for a great penetrating oil. Give that a sec to uh, in there because these are pretty well rusted on here. All right, I probably should have given this more time to soak in. Hopefully I won't break off a bolt. There we go. Ooh. 
That was no fun. And these Hondas like this have a cupped washer. So if this comes off, make sure you put it back on right. The cupped part wants to go towards the blade. Yep, pretty bad, I'd say. Lots of dings. I ain't gonna knock off as much of this rust as I can and debris. Okay, it's gonna get loud here. Um, I'm just gonna do a, a nice, easy pass right there just to establish whatever that angle is. And I'm not trying to get it razor sharp. If you look at them from the factory, they're almost like a butter knife. If they're really razor sharp, they'll get dings in it and chips will fall out of it. Alright, just make sure there's no burrs on here. It's not that super sharp, but all the divots are out. And I've maintained about that 30 degree angle right there. And same thing on the other side. And you can tell when it's getting razor thin right on the edge because it'll start to turn blue a little bit and get really thin. That's why I ran it backwards for just one little cut. Yeah, it feels good. Let's see how she balances. All right, I'm going to use this little balancer here. Oregon makes these. It's just a little pendulum on top of a little pin there. They make them in plastic too, either one. And that looks really good to me. I, I know it's really hard for you to tell because there's no real straight lines here, but you can look at the bottom skirt of that little balancer. If it was off, you'd see it that way or that way, but it seems to be right on the money. So rust makes a great bond and a sealant, but as soon as you break that seal, it turns into a cancer. So when I have parts that were rusted on like that so, Try to knock off as much of that rust as I can. And I like to put a thin smear of grease on things to keep them from seizing onto each other. If this has to come off again in the future. And again, remember, the beveled cut edge goes towards the deck like that. A little more touches right there. Start these in by hand. And remember how those cupped washers go on. Cup goes that way, not this way. So Honda specifies a blade torque of 36 to 42 foot-pounds. And I realize everyone doesn't have a torque wrench. But, you know, that's not a lot. Just don't overdo it. You don't put it back on with an impact wrench because you'll just break bolts and strip out threads. You can see it's not much. That was 42 foot-pounds. There we go. All right, most of these older mowers take 16 to 20 ounces. I pre-measure that in a, uh, in a jug that's got a large mouth on it. It makes it a little easier. It's a lot easier to add oil than take it out. Oops, there goes the lid. Let's pour this in there. Got to pour slowly because I don't have a funnel here. Because it will spill out pretty easily. Oops. Oops. Yeah, that's what I was trying to avoid. One of these days I'll remember to bring my funnel out here with me. Well, it wasn't any of my spectacular oil BP moments out here, but 
Eh, ripped a little bit. And check the level. Um, I don't expect you to see this, but it is right at the full mark. And on a Honda, they normally have a little sticker on there. Don't screw it in. Yeah, right there. Alrighty. And this is where the real fun begins. Because when I had this over on its side, upside down, I noticed that the bottom of the carb bowl was like rusted. And um, these are just some M6 threaded rod. I saw a Honda training video several years ago where the guy pulled out a set of these tools that Honda actually makes for keeping all these gaskets and all this mess together. So I just bought myself some stainless steel M6 threaded rod. I cut a slot in them with a Dremel tool and I never looked back. Stainless steel is a little bit softer than other steel, so there's less of a chance of messing up the um, threads in the head. I bought these studs off of Amazon, and there's a link in the description to where you can buy some M6 stainless steel. Uh, sticky, sticky. Gonna take that breather tube off of right there. Yikes. And on these mowers with this choke mechanism on here, it's a lot easier to just take this off and get it out of the way. There's a gasket behind there that's sort of stuck. I don't know if you can see that or not. Sort of stuck on there. Try to get this linkage off of here without breaking it. Come on. There you go. Yikes. Okay. Now that's a little better. This is, doesn't matter which way this goes back in. Oh, I see a lot of stuff inside of the mouth of that carb. And it is sticky, sticky, sticky. We'll see, we'll see what we can't come up with here. Take off the governor return spring and give this a turn right here because I'm going to have to get some pliers. This fuel hose is pretty well stuck on here. There's a teeny tiny hose clamp. The little clampy guys are way up in there. Just get a pick in there and see if I can't turn that thing around so I can get to it. There we go with some pliers. Now you can see that right there. There you go. And some people are really good at just taking these things off like that. I am not. Needle nose, get that off of there. See if we need to get this fuel hose to budge. Ooh, it is on there tight. There we go. Jake at Eliminator Performance taught me this trick. I just filed that out on a little pry bar. To help move hoses off of there. Not too bad. Okay. There, there it comes. Now, and we can now just turn this guy at 90 and pop him off of there. Wow. This looks sad and bad. The throttle is frozen solid. The choke plate is sticky. I might just leave this thing soaking in gasoline overnight and see if that will help free up any of this stuff. So for any of you that have seen my other videos, you will know my favorite cleaning solution is bad gas that I collect before I take it to the recycling center. And face it, this entire video is about bad gas. So it only seems appropriate. All right, let's see if we can't get some of this crud off of here. At least off the outside. Oh, 
And actually, the bowl nut's not looking so bad right now. I thought that was rust. It's just garbage. And the gasoline is cleaning up the goo at the throttle pretty good, but it's still kind of stuck. I'm sure we'll have to deal with that from the inside. Still can't get that throttle to move. But I can see a whole mess of varnish-sized varnish -sized gas there. The choke is moving a little easier. All right, time to get this thing apart. This is a 10 millimeter. There we go. Nice. That came off of there. Uh, I expect to find some rust inside of there because, oh, well, it's not too, yeah, it's a little bit rusty. I've seen worse. So the inside of that jet, I know you can't see that, is in really, really bad shape. The needle is moving freely. All right, this is the smallest punch I own. Not the tiniest hammer. All right, I'm going to try to get this thing out of here without banging too hard on the fuel inlet. There we go. Nice. Doesn't take a lot. And that needle, I don't know if you can see that or not, looks in surprisingly good shape. A lot of jello and mess in here. And man, ugh, this is horrible. That's really gummed up pretty badly. I'm probably just going to toss this entire thing before I even try to take out those jets in the ultrasonic cleaner with gasoline and see how that does. Now the other thing to pull out of here is the idle circuit is under that screw right there. That's always clogged up and we're going to have to remove this. There's about three threads showing on that. It's the idle speed screw. It's a number two JIS screwdriver. And you can tell it's a JIS screw. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a little dot right there on that. And this really helps get these really tough screws out without stripping them. Well, it wasn't in there too hard at all. Often these things are in really super tight. But that idle circuit goes through there and connects to that hole in there. Now, I just keep plain water in my ultrasonic cleaner and use different jars of solution in there so it keeps a little cleaner this is just plain old old not bad gasoline this is some ethanol free gas that i had left over from last year put the lid on that drop that in and this is another little jar of a pine saw and water i normally don't like to put these honda carb bowls because they're plated in here, because they sometimes the plating sometimes flakes off, but that's in really bad shape. So I'm gonna put that in there as well. Fire this thing up, and um, I guess go have some dinner. Oops, need to drain a little bit of water out of there. I pulled the bowl out of the pine saw, and it did a really good job. It didn't break off any of the plating, which I was kind of worried about. And let's pull out the, the carburetor out of the gasoline. Ooh, this is hot, 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 hot. Now the good thing here, I don't know if you can see this or not, but of course the throttle plate is freed up, but there's still a fair amount of gunk stuck on the bottom there. There's still some gunk on the side, but you can see there's a lot of sludge still in the bottom there. So I'm gonna blow this out and run this through one more time uh, in pine saw and see what we come up with. Now I did uh, spray just a little bit of carb spray in there to try to loosen some of that up. And then I'm gonna see if I can't get the uh, main jet out of here before we go any further. And this is a screwdriver that's got straight sides on it. You don't want a screwdriver that flares out cause that'll mess up these threads. Mm -mm. There we go. Got the main jet on its way out. Uh, sometimes I have to help that out. I can put a little pick in this intake hole, and that gives the threads on the main jet something to work against, so it will actually unscrew out of there. It's kind of in there tight. 
There we go. Yeah, that looks pretty jammed up. I think the pine saw will do a good job on this. And hopefully, not sure if I'll be able to get this atomizer out of here or emulsion tube. You can see the brass. And you may not. The top of that brass tube right there. I might have to wait till it goes through the ultrasonic another time. Oh, I got it to go. I got it to flatten out with that screwdriver. Well, it's sort of wobbling in there. Well, I don't think it's going to come out, so I'm just going to plop this in. Hopefully, down gravity might give us a little hand here, and drop all that in to pine saw, and give that a few more runs in the ultrasonic. So I hope the buzz from the ultrasonic cleaner is uh, not so annoying, but that's the good thing about an ultrasonic cleaner, is you can move on and work on other things while it's happening. That gasket has obviously fallen completely apart. I have to get all that cleaned up. This other heat shield, that gasket is probably good, but you gotta make sure that that hole right there is clear, because that feeds right through to the other side. There's a little hole right there that that has to be free these gaskets are probably okay wow i have not seen that much varnish i don't know if you can get a good idea of that but you see it's completely dark it's like floor finish i'm not a fan of carb spray but sometimes that's what you need. I got the mower sort of tilted. I got it on a little bit of a slant here. Got a two by four on the other side and you can see just the color of all that just coming out of there. It doesn't just melt my little plastic tray there. Yeah, you can see that cleaning that out now. So the guy swore up and down this thing was running last year. And you know, I know people want to sound like they're good. He either picked this stuff up off the side of the road or he's just telling me a big old fib. You know, it's like you really don't need to lie to your doctor. Why do you lie to your small engine mechanic? You know, I can give you a lot more accurate diagnosis and pricing and everything if you don't fib on me. A little bit more coming out. If this, if this carb spray won't melt this toothbrush, I think I can get the rest of that out of there. This gasket's going to be one big air leak, so let's see if we can get that off of here and get that kind of cleaned up. Looks pretty bad. You know that gummy stuff just right off that edge. All right, perfect job for a little... <laughs> little 3M disc here, so we can get that cleaned up without making a big mess. Sorry about the air compressor. My friend Klaus from Hobby Motor, he's in Denmark, turned me on to these 3M Rolo discs. They're not very aggressive but they're really great for removing gaskets off of surfaces, so they don't really take away any material, but that'll be nice and clean for a new gasket. All right, guys, one round in the ultrasonic. See the main jet right there, nice and bubbly in the pine saw. And, uh, oops, so I can get this out of here. That fluid is really kind of hot. Oh, and I don't know if you heard that. The emulsion jet just popped out. And all that um, corrosion and debris that was on the uptake, that's gone. The emulsion tube is popped out. All of the goop, varnished gas. I don't see any more of that goo in there at all. So I think this was a huge success story. Main jet, nice and shiny. Clean as a whistle. I don't know if you can see through there, but I sure can. And the emulsion tube. 
Again, that's looking great too. This is an E string from a guitar. And this pine saw really does its job. And there's a teeny tiny hole up there on some of them. Yeah, there it is. I might not be able to get that in. And an E string is about the only thing I can, I found that will get through there. There's one hole at the top that goes all the way through and 90 degrees away from that is only one small hole. There we go. So there's three holes at the top and eight on the bottom. So yeah, so this is uh, pretty much a success story in my book. And I like to use uh, tip MIG welder tip cleaners to go through this emulsion tube, you just find whichever one. So this is the, this is the biggest one I can get in there. And it feels clear. That hole is clear. We know all the little holes are clear. There's just a little bit of debris, and I know, I, I know you can't see this, but there's just a little bit of debris right there on the end. So I'm gonna hit that with some, uh, I'm gonna hit that with some carb spray. Use a little green scotch bright pad on that to get as much of that debris and polish off the outside. Don't want any of that going in. And you know, I could have gone through six cans of carb spray to do the same thing I got with one round in the ultrasonic cleaner. So it's a win-win. Time to reassemble this little jewel. I probably should have um, run this bowl nut through the ultrasonic cleaner because there's a little bit of rust on the bottom. This is just WD-40, that little scotch bright pad. Gets all that corrosion off of there. Maybe a little wire brush action. We get a little gasket that goes on the bottom there. This is just WD-40. I'm just going to help lube things as they go in, and it will displace whatever water might be in, still inside this carburetor. You don't feel any ridges or bumps in there. Make sure that's clean, because that's got to ride cleanly inside that little channel right in there. Clean off this float a little bit. He seems to have a little bit of fuel varnish on him. Make sure there's no fluid in there. And sometimes when I have a carb that was in as bad a shape as this one is, I like to take a, um, a cotton bud and just run that down in where the needle seat goes and just make sure that's clean. Some people put these on a drill. I don't feel the need to do that, but you can see that's a little bit of debris coming out of there, but I think for the most part, it's probably fine. You just want to make sure there's no cotton fibers left in there because that will keep the needle from sealing up. E-string, that guitar E-string, and I'll go straight down in there as deep as I can go. Hmm. There we go. It'll go all the way down. And if you have a flashlight, which of course, I don't know, you ought to be able to see that inside that little hole right there. And same thing there. If you push this in this way, you'll be able to see the guitar string. Maybe not. But we know that idle circuit is clear. And this is what will cause these Hondas to hunt and surge and have a poor idle. And tighten that down with that number two JIS screwdriver. And every single one of these I've ever taken off have been on there unbelievably tight. So I'm going to tighten that down really well. There we go. Then the idle speed screw with its, with its locking spring. And we want to see about three threads come through the other. The tall end goes in first. That's what's going to stick out inside the Venturi. Next is the main jet. Again, just lubricate the threads a little bit and it will displace whatever water is left in there. This is soft brass going into soft aluminum. It's just all around. It's just a little better to keep that stuff lubed up and it won't hurt a thing. Once it gets snug, just one little one more tiny turn, not much, just make sure it's snug. Next thing is the uh, 
Again, examine the rubber tip of the needle. If there's any ridges in it, you want to replace it. Make sure the sides are clean because that had some varnished gas on it because that has to slide freely inside there. Needle inside the little clip area right there. Turn it upside down. Don't drop it. Needle in there. And the pin, I clean that off with the scotch Bright pad. And that slides easily in there. And check the float. You notice that the level of it is level with the edge of the carb. If it was sticking up like that, it might restrict the fuel flow. Put the bowl on the bowl nut or bowl bolt. Pardon me, I don't know why I call it a nut. And I uh, want to tighten this down pretty, pretty tight. I mean, don't break it, but, you know, make sure it's snug, very snug, because I don't want any leaking fuel out of this thing. There we go. Look at that. Choke is clean. Throttle is clean. Hopefully, this is going to be like a brand new machine. Okay, here we are a new day here. Um, I believe I've cleaned up sort of all these gasket faces. I think they're in okay shape. And the first thing I'm going to do is put on the governor arm for the throttle. And then the throttle return spring. Run these guys down. Little ways. Not all the way on. Because I want to put the fuel line back on before we get too far. And hopefully, these fuel lines, they feel kind of crunchy to me. So I hope they're not going to leak any. The guy said something about a fuel leak, but I don't really know. Because I've yet to put any real fuel in here. Next thing is this choke arm. It's kind of hard to force on there, but you can. Just try not to break this plastic piece it does give and we did have to replace this gasket that goes in between here this is honda part number one six two two eight z l eight zero 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 sometimes they're green sometimes they're this beige color and this hole right here has to line up with that hole right there. You can put it on wrong, but then the carburetor's not going to run right. All right. Slide that on a little bit further. Slide these gaskets on. First thing I'm going to put on is this control plate. All right, we're going to check the action of the choke cable. Oh, and I just realized... I have this breather tube on the wrong side. Back all this off just a little bit. See if I can get that around. I think I'm going to have to back this off again. This breather tube is messing up. It has to go under the throttle control cables and come back up right through here. And you see, I lost that gasket. That's why these studs... Make all the difference in the world. Now you can see the throttle cable. The governor throttle doing its job right there. And then the choke all the way down. So this should start just fine. So I've cleaned up this air box. It was really messy and dirty. So again, the biggest challenge is getting the, um, the breather tube on there with so little room behind there. You very carefully hold your finger behind it and aim for those studs. Got to make sure that breather tube is all the way on. I know you can't see this, but helps look behind there with a the flashlight. And I can see that it's on. Now in order to not drop any of these gaskets, I'm going to keep some pressure on this plate with my hand and remove these studs one at a time and replace it with the bolts. And hopefully I won't drop any gaskets. There we go. I think that was good. Give a quick look. Yep, all those gaskets are still on. 
And I'm going to go ahead and snug this up. Not super tight, but enough to keep pressure on that. Make sure these little bushings are in there because some of the newer Hondas actually have a shoulder bolt on there. So you want to make sure you don't lose that bushing. They can fall out rather easily. And I don't know what the torque is on these, but just make sure they're snug. You are going to the aluminum head, and if you go too tight, you will warp the air box. And that will create problems with airflow. The air filter part number for this one, it's one of the green paper ones, is uh, 17211ZL80223. And a nice new to this mower cover airbox cover because it came in in a really horrible condition got this from the bone yard cleaned all the creepy crawlies out of there paper element out make sure these little hinged portions hook on the hinges there and snap that on and hopefully this mower is going to be good to go fresh fuel we're going to check for leaks because the guy said it was leaking but he said a lot of things, so. Oops, well, that was a good leak right there. That was epic. And I don't see any fuel leaks here. Open the fuel tap and see if there's any leaks coming out of the carburetor. And I feel no leaks at all. Well, let's take it outside and fire it up. All right, control arm all the way forward, choke on. Oh. Turn the fuel back on. Sounds a little weak, but first pull is not bad. Take off the choke. One more time, make sure she starts when she's hot. At low idle. I think this old girl here is passing gas just fine right now. With a little bit of TLC, you can bring back even the most neglected machines from the brink. If you like this video, you might like this one. Five years this one sat. Mo happy.